Hey, everybody. How are you? Thank you very much for watching our show. This is Harris After Dark, or whatever it's called. And I'm Chris. And that's Jim. Hi, Jim. Hello, everybody. Hello. <laughs> that's right. uh, there's so many podcasts call callbacks on, on this YouTube show. For people who don't listen to the podcast, they're like, why was that funny? Yeah. Um, so we're here to pick games here in week 11. We had... Uh, let's just be honest. We'll cop to it. A lot of controversy about my record in week 10. Not really. I just screwed up the lines. I thought I'd gone 500. I was all excited. I went six and six and Dave Piper, our wonderful producer was like, I don't mean to be harsh, dude, but you didn't. And he's right. <laughs> I went five and seven last week, but you, my friend, you went eight and six, which the big news mm. is that you have reached the 500 mark that I can't see from space. Nice job. It's it's take it generally takes me around 10 weeks to get here, so it's nice. A little early. Yeah. Well, I'm I'm proud of you, frankly. Thank you. Uh the best bets I don't think went very well mm. last week. No. Um I have to say though, if I'm going to play one thing under under protest here, it's that my best bet was the Rams Cardinals game before mm. we knew anything about either quarterback and you know it's like I wouldn't have placed any money at all in that game if you know I certainly wouldn't have called it my best bet uh but whatever it's a loss what was yours my best bet was senseless I just went with like the Thursday game and was just like oh, oh right Arthur Atlanta, Smith right. Uh, with a headset it was terrible right. um and <laughs> even you know, Dave tried to talk me out of it and suggested that the game that I actually gave some <laughs> semblance of analysis for it was Pittsburgh outright winning, and they did that, right. and so I didn't. Yeah, they did. Go with that, yeah. But so, you, so our best bets. I mean, might have been a little better than yours. Not that best, Three to and be six honest. And for me. Yeah. Y you, I believe, like you said last Three, week, if you had just not played your best bets, you'd be way over five hundred yeah. now. Yep. Um, so yep. take that for what it's worth, folks. Yep. Um, we love to hear your best bets down in the comments, and uh, we will give ours at the end of the show. But let's get rolling. Uh, week eleven, the Thursday night game. The Tennessee Titans, who I seem to be on when I'm when I'm on the Titans game, I'm on the Titans. I think I think they're six and zero oh against the spread when I pick them on the show, and then there have been a few where I didn't pick them. I think that's not right. I think week one I screwed it up because they, remember they had the Giants and that was that crazy game with the field goal at the end, yada yada yada. Uh, but I tend to be on Tennessee, and you tend to think i'm stupid and given our records i may be uh what do you think the packers are three and a half point favorites on thursday night at home against the titans yeah this is tough for me uh the styles make fights i guess like tennessee wants to get you into like their their wrestling match their their single possession game uh at the same time that's like what green bay's okay with they're like if if we don't want to score we're okay with that too um i just think tennessee is the better football team in this one um i think uh, Tannehill actually does help restore some balance, obviously, to the offense. Like, he makes it seem semi-normal. And uh, they're going to throw to, like, their four tight ends that, you know, Austin Hooper, uh, Jeff Swaim. Is that his name? I always mess it up. Okonkwo. I'm a, a big Okonkwo. A a I love There's that just guy. a series of people who will catch the ball, and none of them will be identifiable in fantasy. But Derrick <laughs> Henry is going to run the ball 27 times. So, yeah. That. So, last week... Derrick Henry kind of did squat against the Eater. Broncos, yes. right? I mean, not only that, but played about 60% of the snaps and yeah. like was out for kind of a couple. I mean, one was a long drive at the end of the first half where you go, all right, that's a their hurry up or whatever. But in the second half, there were times. I, it made me wonder, honestly, watching it back. I didn't watch it live, but when I watched it back on Monday, it made me wonder whether the injury is really a thing, if he's really right. battling something. I don't know. Uh, but, you know, he was he had like a fair carry total going into the fourth quarter and that's when you're supposed to see him go crazy and it, he it did not go crazy um and and i'm gonna stick to my guns and continue to pick the titans i also think they're the better team i think these teams may be the most and least respected teams for vegas or for the public right. i don't know which like green bay constantly i'm like yeah, i'm on the other side against green bay all the time because they're a very public team obviously and the titans just feel like from the very beginning from from Chris Raybon yelling at me on my podcast that I was really stupid for liking the Titans this year from there. And Raybon's smart. Like from that point forward, uh, it feels like every week I get the Titans line and I'm like, oh, once again, everybody thinks they're bad when actually they're actually really good. The defense is excellent. You know, I, I don't know. I'm, I'm with you. 
I'm on Tennessee. Uh, we'll move to the Sunday games. We have no international. Oh, wait, we do have an international game, but it's not a funky time. No. At least I think the isn't the 49er Cardinal game. The Mexico, yeah. Mexico, yep. Mexico City, but that's not a that's at a normal time. That's a Monday night game. Yay! So I don't have to wake up at six thirty a.m. to watch football here on the West Coast. So let's start with the early window. We've got your beloved mm. Atlanta Falcons, mm. at least from last week, are hosting Justin Fields and the unstoppable Chicago Bears. Except for they lost last week. The Bears on the, uh, the sorry the. Falcons are a three and a half point favorite at home against the Bears. Yeah, uh, this is tough because that, that's right where I had this line at. Um, but I'm going to take the you, Bears. You, you literally said three and a half. I said three and a half points. I swear to God, I wrote down three and a half. I did. You guessed three and a half. You guessed half points. I did. I need to take a, I like, do. I need to rewind this I whole do. show. Dave Piper, I I, guess let's I guess, just let's. I guess two and a half points for the Green Bay line. Uh, I was wrong. Like so. <laughs> like <laughs> I did. I have it written down here. Um, but I'm going to take bet, the I bet here. six and a quarter. I bet six and a quarter. I bet uh, four and three fourths. Yeah. And uh, we also call that uh, uh, 13 out of 10. Uh, 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 Fields, Justin Fields. He's going to run. Justin. Just, and, uh, okay. <laughs> and Marcus Mariota is going to run too, but just not as well. And uh, okay. Kyle Pitts is going to disappoint everybody, even himself. So, you know. You're taking the points, three yeah. and a half. Chicago. Or you're, or you're not playing it because you. Chicago's terrible defense, but I think this is going to be. Uh, I like the over in this, and I like Chicago to score a lot of points. So, yeah. I definitely like a lot of points here because the Falcons' pass defense is not good. Um, the Falcons are like a competent. It's funny. I think of the Falcons as like they're the. They're the Titans and not as good. They're the, they're buttoned down. They mostly got it all together. They don't, you know, do a lot of stupid things. Mostly, you know, like uh, it's hard to, hard to say that after the Thursday night game. But I, I feel like the Bears come in and their zippers down and they got all stuff yeah. junk flying in yep. the wind. And you know they they're going to have seventeen exciting plays in this game and nine of them are going to be for them and eight are going to be the Falcons and they're that's nice. going to be the thing that decides it. In that sort of uh, arrangement, I tend to like the the. Um, the the more button button oh, okay. down group, I I tend to, but I set the line at three, Ooh. and so if it's three and a half, three and a half I have, I have to be with you. I so I I don't set half points because my microscope doesn't quite work at that level of work in, in depth points. or whatever it is. Um, let's do the rest of the games in a moment. Let's thank the sponsor because without DraftKings, we don't get to do this show and hopefully make you chuckle a little bit. Uh. J- Jim and I both would love to play on DraftKings. However, I live in California and I'm not allowed to. But Jim has DraftKings on his phone. I am. I know it for sure. And uh, it's a place to play the games. If you live in one of those magic states, they actually have a pretty fun promotion where uh, for your first $5 bet, you can pick a game heads up. It, you don't have to win against the spread. And if you if your team that you pick wins for the $5, you get $200 in free bets. It's pretty fun. And the way to help out the show, if you do download the DraftKings app, if you live in one of those magic states, not California after this election, which is annoys, annoys me quite a bit, uh, just please, when you sign up, use the code HarrisTube. That does help us. Uh, that makes them realize that sponsoring this this YouTube show worked and it gives them some hope of maybe doing it again in the future uh, so please do use that code harris to download the DraftKings sportsbook app uh f- fun stuff you can five dollar bet win two hundred dollars in free bets we appreciate it let's move on your eagles fresh off their first loss of the season are traveling to indianapolis it's a trap said that fishy guy in the star wars thing the colts are home dogs and i should add that we have six home dogs mm. This week, and I think I might be on five of them. <laughs> the the um, point spread is s- yeah. s- uh, seven on the road. Eagles minus yeah, seven. Yeah, that's a lot of points. Uh, feels a little bit like, and I, you know, I misread the incompetence of the Raiders versus the incompetence of Jeff Saturday. I want to apologize to everybody. Uh, my, my incompetence <laughs> meter was off. It's usually pretty high. I'm around incompetence all the time. I feel like I, I'm, I look inward. Um, but I'm gonna. The Eagles, I think, stop them. The Eagles win. For somebody who navigates these point spreads and predicts them to the half point, it really feels like you're pulling stuff out of your butt. Sometimes dude. that's the case, but um, <laughs> this is the difficult one because I often emotionally hedge with this one. So right. I'm thinking a little bit, um, and I am. I think it's too much of a revenge game for Nick Sirianni, okay? Like, for 
<laughs> okay. He, he was he was respected. I can't believe he, I'm losing to this freaking guy. He was well respected, <laughs> and they treated him well, and he's still a little bitter about it. So, yeah. So, so you are going to give the points. You're on the I Eagles am. minus seven in a big bounce yeah. back from the loss. I'm That's not. Perfect. I'm on the Colts. Uh, it's been a year of home dogs. I'm going to stick with the home dogs a lot of the time. I didn't set out to do that. I set the line at five. So when it turned out seven, it meant that I was, had to be on the Colts and I didn't feel great about it. I will say though, what's up with Philly's run defense? It seems like a bad time to be facing Jonathan Taylor being resurgent because you know, the entire story on Monday night was it didn't matter which commander running back it was. They all just kind of kept drives going. It's not like you had long, long runs. I mean, it, 10, 11 were yeah. the top for both guys, but they had a whole lot of like six and sevens. I feel, I so the running mattered. I also feel like they converted on like a, like five third, third and fives and longer too. So like meaning there was other, I think issues like with the defense, uh, just, yeah, there's no, there's not enough pressure right now. I think Philadelphia is the creep. So. Here's what I've always said. And you know this about me. If I have a chance to back Matt Ryan with good heart, American cash, I'm always going to do it. Obviously how much I, mean, I yes. love. Love Matt Ryan. Uh, the footy pajama Patriots. I'm not wearing footy pajamas this week, uh, but I am wearing a Yacht Possum t-shirt. Sweet. Jim, do you have one of these? Sweet, sweet. I don't have them, but, you, it's, you have no, one? but it's sweet. All sweet. right, well, now we have to... We, we, there's going to come a point later in the season where I'm going to get you mm. one into oh, your yeah. house, yes. and then we're going we're gonna to wear them Beautiful. together on the show. That's It's going to be really, really adorable. The footy pajama Patriots are hosting the Jets, who they did beat mm. and cover against uh, just... Well, I guess it was three weeks ago, but two games ago. Mm-hmm. Both of these teams coming off their bye. It's in New England. Uh, the Patriots are favored by three. And this wasn't this the game where there was like the pick six called back to like less. Uh, They're uh, absolutely abs- for a for a pretty shaky roughing the pass really call. Really high leverage yeah. swing play there in a tight game. Yep. So that was yep. Kind of, I mean, like if if you didn't know that, I guess it, it it's kind of like that through the game, right? Um, uh, I still just think Bill versus. Zach Wilson is too sweet of a setup, <laughs> and it's it'd be really hard for me. Like, it's not enough points. I would need more points to take the Jets. Right. Uh, I'm not comfortable enough. Me with too. This. It's just one score, so I'm going to take the. I'm going to take the. the I'm going to give the points. Jets. Um, ah, I'm I'm going to give the points. I I I, uh, I actually nailed this line. Yeah. I nailed it at three, so I'm not supposed I have to have to take it. But I nailed two other but, ones. You know, so. I are you are you talking? Do you want? <laughs> Is there anything else to Sorry. say? <laughs> uh, I I uh, I I nailed this line at three, so I don't love it. Uh, but I had to come down because I had two other games that I also nailed the line, and so I'm gonna say Patriots. Um, it's I just think I was laughing as you started your explanation because it seems like every time you're about to give a pick, you give a reason why you would do the other mm-hmm. pick. You go, you know, I, I remember that pick six, and that just struck me that totally swung the game that yeah. the Jets probably otherwise would have walked away with Patriots. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Uh, well, it, these games are that way. They're they're single possession and division games. I mean, so. they are, but the commentary doesn't have to be. But we're, we digress. Uh, you're beating me. I shouldn't criticize. I'm not meaning to criticize anything that you're doing. You're you're crushing me this year. Uh, I'm on you. I'm on the same side. I'm on the same side. Patriots. Uh, <laughs> Commanders coming off their big divisional win. They are visiting the Texans. They are three and a half point favorites because they're excellent now. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to give the points on the road here. I think they're just better. Okay. Uh, this is the, this is the. I don't know who the number one player who we're tanking for in the NBA. At least we established very early who everybody's tanking for. You know, <laughs> I'm not sure what the number is. It Stroud, like be proud to be bad for Stroud. I don't know, uh, but I'm going to give the points. Washington. I just think they're the way better team, and this should probably be like they've been. What is this? Like five wins in a row, or five of six that they've done? Like they've been okay. Yeah. Uh, what did you set the line at? Uh, I set it at at, at four. So oh. um, <laughs> it's a half point off. You're like, this is an outrage. Uh, no, it is. It's an outrage. I think they're a better team. Yeah. Uh, I mean, you're right. To to set it at four for a road team means you think they're like six points better at home, and that's or on a neutral site, right? So that's fine. Uh, I set it at three, so I have to be on the Texans. I, I think there's. I don't love the whole like. I know when a letdown is coming for a team when they've had an emotional high and the next week, I'm sure that, you know, I think that stuff is kind of overrated. Right. I also think the commanders are probably a little overrated too. Uh, okay. I, I, so I don't feel, you know, I easily could have imagined that the line was four and then been on the same side with you. So I don't find much value in it, but I'm going to be on the Texans that, you know, the, 
the real problem they have is run defense, and the thing that the commanders want to do is run, and that does strike me as a bit of a problem. But I just think these games have a tendency when when it's you know, I don't think Sloppy. like how good are the commanders really? Mm. Are they mm. aren't they like a? I'd like to think really good. They beat the Eagles. <laughs> <laughs> aren't they like a 500 team? Maybe even a little worse. Aren't, they are. Aren't they like an so eight they nine team. I don't want to be. I don't want they that are. eight and nine team on the road given points. I just, I'm, I'm talking myself into that because I easily could be on the same side as you. But that's how I. But this Houston team's a real two win team to me. So you know. Yeah, it, it's fair. I, it's just you know, it seems to me that the Commanders win 1916, and we all go, ooh, right. they, they didn't cover. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. Rams are visiting the Saints. Uh, there was a time, and at that time was, I don't know, like 11 months ago, when this would have been fun. And now it's mm-hmm. absolutely not. Cooper Cup is down, had surgery, not officially done for the year, but, you know. I don't know. Have you heard what this tightrope surgery is on a high ankle sprain? It screen? sounds terrible. What a, I mean, anytime that there's a specific, like, unique name for a surgery, it <laughs> does not say. It's like, it's a, it's, they're taking your own tendon, and I'm going to screw this up. They're, like, Ooh. looping it around your ankle and, and using that to secure the bones. And Ooh. people who have had it report that, like, years after, they, their ankle flexibility is never the same. And the reason they have it, so I guess sometimes you need it just because you need it. You're, you're, Leg will never be the same, but sometimes they're doing it for speed. I guess Tua had it twice in college, and oh, okay. and like was doing it so he could race back for a bowl game, you know. And it's like gutty, but he 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 told apparently he told Mac Jones don't get it when Mac Jones got a ankle sprain. He's like you don't you don't, you won't be as mobile. You won't like what your ankle feels like the rest of your life. So yay Cooper Cup! Like that doesn't sound wow. so so yeah. awesome for him. Um, this line really moved, though, because when we were first talking about it, it was four and a half because there was a suspicion that Stafford would miss another game. I think now, given the line movement, given the news that we've seen as of our recording this, it feels like, OK, now it's down to Saints minus three because the assumption is that Stafford will play, albeit without Cup. Yeah, I mean, they couldn't do anything with Walford, right? So it was just it was Oof. awful. Yeah, it was bad. It was bad. Uh, I mean... It, Colt McCoy looked incredible in, the, in that game. <laughs> so I can see the reason for the line movement at the same time. I just cannot give points with Andy Dalton, Me neither. regardless of the context. Yeah. So I'm going to take the points. I mean, this isn't even really that much of a read on the Rams. It's more just a, I'd rather just not give points with Andy Dalton. So. Yeah, I, I kind of feel the same, honestly. And, and just one outfit, again, seems like it has its poo together and just is suffering personnel wise. And that's the Rams. Right. They're falling apart. I right. don't, after watching that game plan against the Steelers, I, again, on a game I didn't watch live, right? So I, I watched that on Monday right. and didn't know anything, didn't look at the box score, just watched the game as it unfolded. And to see them never use Alvin Kamara, to see them be like, Taysom Hill, man, yeah. you know, that did that worked okay, but I feel a lot better about Andy Dalton rolling out and vomiting the ball to it was, some it was incredible. receiver that I don't know. Like, it just feels like that organization has, like, lost its way a little bit. It's like metaverse Andy Dalton, where he was always the starter. It's like, it's incredible. <laughs> he, <laughs> it's like... He's, I mean, in his own little, you know, he's got the goggles on, and in his own little world, he's he's got a lot of low-res... Uh, defensive lineman running at him and he just like he breathes on him and they fall down but that's not the real life so i'm with you uh, i'm gonna take the points uh and be on the rams the browns are gonna maybe feel the brunt of josh allen's anger uh the browns yeah. are traveling to buffalo uh we think allen probably will play again this week because he played last week although Oh, my God. Dave Piper did a great video, which hopefully he's linking to right now, uh, chronicling the comedy behind how in the world the Vikings beat the Bills in that game. Vegas clearly is uh, thinking that Bills are going to bounce back here because they're eight and a half point favorites over the Browns. That was like a writer's room who just couldn't finish an episode (laughs) like that. That (laughs) that was ridiculous. That game. Yeah. Um, This is too many points for me, though. Okay. I had it. I wrote it down at seven and a half. I really did a half point. It's unreal, <laughs> I man. It the half. accuracy, the precision. It's just... And I'm going to take the points with Cleveland. Um, it's just too many. Like, also, I, mean, I guess I'm also basing this on this weather talk a little bit too. Mm. Just you know, everyone's. I guess everyone's hammering the under in this. They're expecting all this weather. That's kind of ridiculous to do that. I think this far out. But I do think it's if there is weather, and I do think. Cleveland wants to drag you into their style, reduce the game with possessions. So I would rather just take the points. So, so the weather is, you know, we're, we're so far out. We're recording this four days right. before the game. So it, so people watching one day before the game, if you have a sense that it's a blizzard, then then 
probably listen to Jim sure. and not listen to me, but I set sure. the line at 10. So I guess I'm going to, okay. I'm going to give the points. Um, you're right. Like the thing that the Browns can and want to do is Nick Chubb based, you know, and that right. you can say Buffalo's got a good defense and they really do, but I don't think Nick Chubb has really been stoppable by, cause that offensive line is fantastic. You know, it's just great. And Chubb himself is just great. So there's a, there's a way for the Browns to basically do what the commanders just did and just, and laugh at your big point spread and keep the ball and frustrate. You know, I, I wouldn't have characterized the Eagle offense as having a particularly bad night in that game. They just didn't ever have the ball. Right. You know, Jalen Hurts was right. pretty good. Fumbled a few times. And, yeah. Right, yeah. Um, what's his name fumbles, right? The long bomber, yeah. they probably win. Watkins. Yeah. Um, so, so there's a lot, so I'm kind of doing a, you, I'm, I'm making all of your points and then I'm going to flip it around and go, <laughs> the other Aha! uh, I think Josh yeah. Allen is like kind of humiliated and will yes. figure a yeah. way to wreak havoc and we'll yeah. see, we'll see the best of the bills. This is a dumb angle that I'm, <laughs> um, this is a motivation. But they, angle. Did, they did. They left so many points on the field against Minnesota. Like, so Josh Allen just strikes me as the kind of kid who, who, does actually like I hate the analysis that goes they're mad so that means they're gonna play good like okay right. <laughs> I mean yeah. the other team forgets to be mad and then they lose like I just I don't right. think it really works that way but maybe I'm making an exception for Josh Allen because I'm not sure he's got like yeah. a lot of brain cells and right and the ones that are there seem like they're kind of like a smack Victory. talking yeah like a yeah. like a you know he wants to jump off a, buzz, the, a little buzz light year action i get it wants yeah, to like. jump off the top rope a little bit and maybe he will yeah. on the browns that's my that's my feeling um panthers are going to go to baltimore and they are going to get the most points anybody is getting mm. all in week 11 at least as, as of our recording this because the ravens are 13 point favorites over your carolina panthers they really are. They're my Panthers. Um, <laughs> and Baker Mayfield. <laughs> I, mean, I, just, I just root for hedge funds. Um, I am going to uh, take the points. It's too many points. Too many points. Okay. Uh, for this Baltimore team. I know that they, they, they could. There are obviously paths. There's a reason this is 13 points. Of course. But, but, but I also just think that this could also be a, like a, uh, a Donta Foreman weirdo. Do enough to keep it within, obviously, closer than 13. So, yeah. It's too many points. Too many points. Agreed. I set it at nine, so I, I think it's really too many points. Uh, right. The line is moving the other way. The line is moving. I mean, it is. maybe more and more people have come to the realization that, oh, my God, oh, my God, Baker Mayfield starting again. Right. Is Baker Mayfield really is terrible? Like, I, I he was. Ooh. He was so bad the Thank first me. couple of months. He was so bad. I, I mm. still can't. He, Dave Piper knows that he wasn't this bad with the Browns. He wasn't this bad with the Browns. No. Like, this is this is like organizational schmegma falling all over him, like dropping. He went from state farm to, I don't know, like what he's doing. Like <laughs> careful. We might look for the next insurance sponsor. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. Yeah. I was going to say some, yeah, go ahead. <laughs> he went from state farm to McCormick's <laughs> insurance. Yeah. Uh, Pure auto. Yeah, to, right. yeah. to the underscore family. Uh, yes. Don't, never do that. Yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm with you. It just seems like, a lot has to go right for this Ravens team to do that many points on an average day, but they certainly could. Obviously they could. You're right. Uh, we've got the lions and the giants and the lions have won a couple of games in a row that they absolutely should not have won. And the giants right. came back from their bye week after kind of like getting defrocked a little bit in, uh, in Seattle. Can I say defrocked? Uh, and, yeah. and, and, Played pretty well last week. So the Giants at home, three-point favorite over your high-octane Detroit Lions. Yeah, I thought this was going to be higher. I had this at minus five. So, I had it at minus five also. Uh, I am going to take the Giants. I just think they're more competent when it comes down to these decisions that you're talking about. I, if you envision a single-score game, which is very possible, I'm going to choose the the guy who's not on Detroit sidelines. <laughs> You know. <laughs> like yeah, just... I think that's fair. I think that's fair. That's yeah. a pretty good reasoning. Just like, sure, is it a close game? Sure, the Giants aren't really decision built. making. They're not blowing. It. Right. They're not built to blow anybody out either. Right. The no. Giants are designed to play fairly exactly. close to the vet. They're terrified of their quarterback, and they that's should. Why be. this is a three point line? It's, right. It's it's they they should be terrified of their quarterback. He's not good enough. But 
right. th- you know, they're figuring out a way and I'll say, yeah, I mean, if, if, it, if winning by a field goal means I push, I feel pretty good about it. So we right. will be on the same side there. All right. The first of my no plays, I had three lines that I nailed, uh, and two of them are forthcoming. The Raiders, oh, the sad Raiders, who by every measure in the world, including the eyeball test and every statistic out there, should certainly not be a two-win team. They certainly should not. And they're humiliatingly going to Denver. They might be one of the only teams that Denver would ever be favored over. <laughs> I mean, that would Denver would, you know, that Denver is favored. Yeah, that Denver would be favored over. Uh, the Broncos are minus three. And uh, Jim, I don't think you had to subject yourself to the to the Broncos Titans game last week, but you know it's my job to do it. Um, if you want, and if you, if you're out of Samonex, another sponsor, if you're out of uh, Sleepy Time Tea, please please feel free to pop that one in. It was it was awful. Uh, the Broncos somehow are a three point favorite. Yeah, that's it's just. <laughs> I mean, people are like screaming for Nathaniel Hackett's job, and he's like, I'm a three point favorite, guys. Um, <laughs> and, and I have a better record so than know. Josh McDaniels. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and at the same time, like, like Devontae Adams, I feel like, is going to catch a touchdown and just point and still complain to everybody. <laughs> like, that'll be his celebration. <laughs> like, um, but uh, I can't do it. I can't do the Raiders anymore. But I, I, Denver's not very good, though. Um, Here's the thing. I'm gonna go, I, oh, go ahead. I had this written down at three as well. So um, you can say no play. But I'm gonna play it. All right. I'm gonna play it. I'm gonna play it. And the play is. Oh my god! I can already see it. It's the play for pride. It is uh, the Raiders win <laughs> outright. I'm done with the Raiders, and then we get the little graphic that says ten seconds later. I just realized. I forgot that in my head. I realized that uh, Derek Carr is gonna be sprinting down, holding his. Like it's like uh, it's like a it's like if they've remade 300, but with Derek Carr and Russell Wilson. <laughs> Um, here's what I'll say. There's one actually good unit on the field in that game, and it's the Broncos defense. It is good. Right. It is. It's not yeah, yeah. like amazing. The secondary is really good. Yeah. It's it's a good defense. I mean, you know, you were of the opinion that Bradley Chubb wasn't really actually playing that well before they traded him. Right. I know. And uh, you pay a lot That's more a cl- closer attention to that stuff than I do. I trust you on that. And it feels like. You know, they held Derrick Henry in check. You haven't, you know, it's all all well and good to say right. we're going to focus on Henry. Usually that doesn't matter. Usually, you know, that offensive mm-hmm. line and that running back just get it get it done as they say. And and like you said, a really good secondary. I didn't play the game, but it's it's interesting that, you know, you'd say the worst unit in the game is the Broncos offense, but the Raiders defense isn't very good either. Mm. And it's the only game that Russell Wilson looked human against this year was the Raiders. Yeah. You know, he <laughs> he actually looked last week. I mean, Tennessee is good. Like he looked mm-hmm. last. He he definitely. You know, he lost Judy on the first play. He looked right very engaged. There was a fourth and five at the end that he scrambled for. That the, it was like old Russell Wilson. His I mean, he's having offensive line problems. He himself mm-hmm. is so gun shy that he's staring at the pass rush. He, you can see him looking at the rushers, trying to not get hit, uh, because it's happening so fast. Uh, it's it's rough. It's rough to watch. We we love Russell Wilson. Like this isn't fun. It, you know, off field cornball, on field, awesome. Right. Like yeah. I want to see him play better yeah. for sure. Uh, okay, let's do big big game. Cowboys uh, traveling to Minnesota. One of these teams is America's team, and mm. after last week, it may be Minnesota. The Cowboys on the road. Yeah. Coming off a loss to Green Bay, mm. <laughs> are a point and a half favorite over the Vikings. Yeah. Just beat I didn't the, have it that way. Just beat so. the Bills. I'm just gonna go with what I wrote. I wrote, I wrote Minnesota minus two, and I'm just gonna go with that. So I, I put it at three, yeah. man. I, I I'm like. I'm gonna go with that. I don't understand this line. I, I, Mimi, can can you? I I look to see if anybody's coming off injured reserve for Dallas. I was like, is is? I I don't understand the line. Like, okay, no question, Minnesota shouldn't have won that game. Everybody knows they shouldn't have won that game. It was it was fluky. They're right in that game against the presumptive best team in the league on the road. (laughs) Like, it's I I think even if they lose that game, don't we come away? Do we maybe come away liking the Vikings more if they? Yeah, yeah, right. Yes, you know what I mean. Like, is this the quote unquote letdown game? Is that what this line is? Is this like a tax? Is this a tax for 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 (laughs) For, Josh Allen fumbling for luck? (laughs) Right, it's a luck tax. Yep. Yeah. Two and a half point luck tax. Sorry, Vikings. Like, 
obviously there's a, the Cowboys are really good. There's a way the Cowboys win this game and they win it kind of easily, but isn't there also a way the Viking, like this is a, yeah. a neutral field, like pretty close to even, aren't they pretty, aren't they? This is basically saying that the one score games that Minnesota has been winning is unsustainable and it has to end. But have the Cowboys not been? No, that's like, what I'm saying. Playing one score it's games, just saying that losing. This is literally the guy who stares at the roulette board and is like, "It can't keep going this way." It's like, <laughs> well, that's not how this works. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Um, I mean, so so it's gonna. I'm just gonna spoil it right now. It's my best bet. Yeah, because I did not understand okay, yeah. the line. I, I it, it is weird. Yeah, I didn't understand it. So this will be this will be the one I'm on. And, and again, like this isn't the Cowboys are bad. This is just two good teams at one team's home. The home team should be favored. It shouldn't be right. huge, but it should be favored. Uh, Cincinnati <laughs> reliving that week one insane game Weirdo. when the yeah. Steelers had the fir- first place in their division for a week because that was weird. Uh, they're going to Pittsburgh this time, and the line is uh, Pitt- Cincinnati on the road minus four. Yeah. Um, I'm going to give the points here with Cincinnati. Um their pass rush isn't very good, but their secondary is pretty good. Mm. So, like, I still think they're going to give this rookie problems and pick it. I just think gives too many. There's just too many gifts. I think are going to be given to this Bengals offense. Too many. It's like the extra possession thing. It's just too many. I think they're going to win the possession battle like enough that they kick cover. Yeah, it makes sense. It's 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 got seventeen ten Bengals written all over it, you know, right. like and right. and just like how do the Steelers score a lot of points in any game? Although they just you know That's, they just did, uh, yeah, they just kind of did. But um, I'm I'm actually on the Steelers uh, again, road or home dogs, I guess. Um, not intentionally. Yeah. I'm not looking at it and saying it's a home dog. I just set the line at three, so seeing it at four means I'm on the Steelers. You can tell me because you you are paying more closer attention to the defense, right. uh, the individual defensive players that I am. Like, it felt to me like it was a totally different defense with what's what's ridiculous. With he watch. changes everything because yeah. he has, it's like an order of operations. Everybody else's job gets like sequentially easier because yeah. now they're not getting doubled, and you know, like Alex Highsmith is just like free, right? So. Well, yeah, and so that's it, what it's important. That's what made me think this. You can tell me if you think this is like an overreaction, because again, I, I was one point off the line. But, uh, like, if there's one offensive line I don't trust, <laughs> you know, I mean, they're not the worst offensive line in the league, but they are not good. And right. Cincinnati's, I mean, and Pittsburgh yeah. isn't good either. It's just I don't think Cincinnati has the horses to get anything, any any pressure. Whereas yeah. the biggest horse just came back. I'm I'm I guess I'm overreacting to that, and just thinking, oh I my the, god, the quarterback if, gap. I just think is yeah, so. You're right. I, I mean, it's, it's there, not. So. I'm a point off. I can't I can't argue too much. But my logic yeah, right. is, Burrow gets sacked eight times and throws two right. interceptions and lost fast. Stays AFC North. Yeah, stays closed. Uh, we got Sunday night. The Chargers are on our national TV screens Sunday night, two weeks in a row. This time it's coming to L.A., the home of the Chiefs. Uh, the, the Chiefs are favored yeah. on the road by six and a half points. Uh, I had this line at seven. Okay. If you'd said it's six and so a half, I'm, I was going to throw the microphone. No, so. fire me. I know. I'm going to go with uh, the Chiefs here because – um, one, I know Mike Williams and, and, and Keenan Allen are practicing and that's great that I would hope they come back cause it's been really rough, but I still just think Kansas city is just a far better team than this team. And I know they played well last time, yeah. but they had a lot more, they had a lot more going for them then I think. Yeah. Chargers, well, so. I think the thing they had going for them was the, the receivers. You're right. Uh, ho- right. home dog, home dog. I, I said it, at, right. I said it at four. So okay. seeing it six and a half, I, you know, of course, what's the, a person who's looking for, for handicapping, what's the first reaction when you want to, when you're about to take a team that's getting six and a half points? <laughs> Sucker. Uh, yeah, <laughs> Sucker. Yeah. Oh, you yeah. think they have to win by seven, huh? Sucker. Right. I mean, yeah. I'm, I'm the sucker here, but, uh, I, I yeah, I, I don't think the chiefs are great. Right. I think the chiefs yeah. are good. I think they're good. I think there's a lot of good teams. I don't think the chiefs are great. Um, and and I mean we remember that. You're right. I mean Keenan Allen didn't play in the week two. Was it week two they played early? Yeah, yeah, yeah. But Mike Williams did, and he played really well. And the Chargers have been down like so many defensive linemen. Right? They've they right. by the end of that Niner game they were plugging you know y- your uncle in at nose tackle. And believe me, he's fat, but he cannot move. He he has an underscore yeah. in his Twitter handle, but 
Uh, sure. I, yeah, I'm on the home dog. I'm on uh, Charger six and a half. May wind up looking really stupid. Lastly, we will go to Mexico City for Monday night. Uh, the good thing is that it's Buck and Aikman, and I trust them not to make jackasses out of themselves by being like tangentially racist. I think they're, they'll probably be Ooh. cool about Mexico City. Uh, the Niners at, uh, neutral site game, eight point favorite over the Cardinals, very much indicating that the market thinks Russ, uh, Kyler Murray won't play. Right. Yeah. Um, two. I'm thinking about that, but this is still too many points for me. Okay. Again, I'm going to take, they're not a home dog, but they're, they're just a, a theoretical they're neutral, dog. neutral dog. The, the neutral dog. Um, I just again, they're ten. This is like the supercharged Tennessee of the NFC. Like the the Niners, they're going to stay in these fights. I'm not sure they're going to pull away. They're obviously they could if it's Colt McCoy. I could be wrong here. Um, even if it's Kyler, I, I do this every time. Um, but I just <laughs> and now I I'm think now I'm picking the Niners. Game, <laughs> this is a one score game. It's going to be a one score game. So that's why I'm taking the the the, the Cardinals. <laughs> you know, Chris. Every Niner was uh, is is cycling on their roids. They're all leading to this True. game. It's perfect. It's True. the exact time you want to be on the San Francisco 49ers. Cardinals. Uh, Cardinals. No, you're True. you're on the Cardinals. Uh, this is my no play. I set the line at eight. Thinking, thinking cool mm, play. Wow. I set the line right at eight. So the my my other no play. I made myself play the Patriots. I did not make myself play this one. And I got to say, after being scarred last week by Stafford not even knowing he was in the concussion protocol until after we made the show and having that have be my best bet. I was like, you know what Monday night game that has a quarterback. I don't know if he's going to play or not. Uh, Let's do it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to play that game. Uh, this is the point where I acknowledge that I did not ask Dave Piper before we started uh, who the, uh, the lucky commenter was on, uh, on, on week 10 who got their best bet. Correct. So I'm going to move my mouth and then Dave in post production is going to like make me say the person's user handle or put it across the bottom. So here we go. Congratulations, way to go, Kyle Groshans taking the Tennessee Titans. Man, great job! I, I really can't even believe it. It's such a great pick. winner. Yeah, big pick. Sorry, that's that. That was not a production problem. That was a host moron problem. Uh, so we know that my best bet is the Vikings. I'm going to take the points against the Cowboys. How about you, Jim? I am going to – I should have gone with this team for the best bet last week. I'm going to go the opposite way. I'm going to the Bengals. I think the Bengals cruise <laughs> against Kenny Pickett. So that's it's my just, logic. Yeah, I, I, I love getting these little glimpses into the nooks and crannies of your brain. Just the, the hallways that we go down and then turn back around. Like last week I was supposed to take the Steelers. Yeah. Therefore, yeah. this week I'll yeah. take the team that's playing the Steelers. Cause. Yep. <laughs> yeah, that's how it works. That's how it works. That's how you go three and three and seven with best bets. That's how you do it. However, you're at five hundred for the season, and I can't see five hundred for space, as I said. So there we go. you are kicking my butt, and you know I'm just teasing. You are doing better than I am, and you're better at this than I am, and I am humbled in your presence. We would love to know your uh, listener uh, or viewer. We would love to know your best bet. Let us know down in the comments, and and next time I won't forget. Uh, to check on who gets the right one. Uh, and we'd love for you to follow Jim on Twitter at underscore Jimmy McCormick. You can follow me at Harris Football. Uh, for Dave Piper, who is doing a wonderful job producing these shows. And also, please down in the comments, give Dave a hand for how great he's doing on the Silliest Thing videos that he's doing every week because they are really funny and really great. And uh, and we would love for you to subscribe to the channel and uh, you know support DraftKings. Use our code HarrisTube because that gives us license to be morons and make bad picks but hopefully make you laugh a little bit uh thank you again very much for watching for dave for jim i'm chris we'll see you thanks so much for watching please 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 smash that like button write a comment tell us who else you'd like to see us review film on and of course best of all please subscribe to our channel and then click that little bell above the subscribe button and you'll be notified whenever we post a new video